You know what I absolutely hate? Mm, vegetables. Okay, other than that. Um, sunlight. That that just seems really obvious. Like, well, not to everyone. Okay. But go on. But specifically with the topic that's probably on the video, so people know where we're going with this cold open. Mm-hmm. I hate it when you start playing a new game and you know you know that person's voice. Oh, it's like, oh, where have I heard that voice? Or, you know, wasn't that so-and-so in such-and-such? And and... Right. Yeah. And the problem is, I don't do it with main characters. It's very rare that it's like a main character that throws me for a loop. It's always hmm. henchman number two or... Additional voice. Or... or someone, like, a great example, one of the Halo games. Hmm. I want to say it was Halo 2. might have been Halo 3, but I think it was Halo 2. One of the additional soldier voices, random female soldier, was a girl who was in that 70s show. She was Donna in that 70s show. She was the redhead. Oh, um, who is in Orange is the New Black? I think you're right. I'm pretty sure like she's the in really that. really tall... See, I've never of... seen Orange is the New Black. No, neither have I, but I know she's in it. Hmm. We need to find someone who's seen Orange is the New Black and see if she's one we, of the we people. Know, we know a few people that watch it. But we need to see if she's one of the people that's topless in Orange is the New Black. <sighs> if Ruby Rose is topless, then I'm down. But anyway. So you're saying we should watch Orange is the New Black? I think Black. we should watch it anyway, yes. Okay. It's apparently good. So Sure. That's not what we're here to discuss no, today. it's not. Even, even though it has Captain Janeway in it. I'm, I'm not here to discuss Orange is the New Black. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it does. Yes, yeah. you're right. Mm-hmm. Um, so, what we are here to discuss today is we're going to talk about voice actors in video games. Mm-hmm. And like with a lot of the topics we've been doing lately, this is going to be kind of tip of the iceberg stuff. Yeah. You know, we could go really in-depth to... Video game movies, kind of like what we did last time. Mm. But, you know, we want to try to keep this around an hour as much as possible. Mm. And there's just a lot to talk about. And so maybe in the future, we'll do that. But again, with this subject, you know, there's so much to discuss about voice acting, Mm. about um, the recent stuff, you know, with them wanting more pay and all of the, you know, just everything. There's a lot we could talk about. Mm Mm-hmm. However, for today, we just want to talk about our favorite performances. Like a few people, talk about some of the big hitters, and, you know, maybe a couple that, you know, people might not be aware of or Mm. know exactly what they've done. But mostly, you know, these are the big guys and girls, and these are going to be some of the bigger performances that are kind of widely accepted. More common roles. Yeah, they're kind of widely accepted as the good ones. Yeah. And maybe later on we'll do we'll do another one of these and kind of try to get to other performances or lesser known voice actors and actresses that are doing really well. So if anybody's listening to this and you're like they didn't mention my favorite, I was just about to say because there's a, like when I go back to edit these and I always think oh I forgot to mention this or oh, yeah, oh like happen, how yeah. how could I forget that? You we, know? we just we don't have that kind of time to unless we want to start breaking these episodes up and talking mm. about it for three hours and then we'll just do three different episodes, you know. Right, yeah. I don't know if that would hold anyone's attention with us just rambling about voice acting for I'm three ki- hours. No, I'm kind of surprised that if we hold anybody's attention that anybody really cares what to, like, just Are, are you even sure people. that we do? Are you sure that these guys and girls aren't just, like, leaving the episode on in the background while they're, like, cleaning I their mean, apartment? They, I mean, they could be, and you're more than welcome to do that. I yeah. encourage this. We're not going to complain. No, no, not at all. So, um, just just listen away and, you know, get your lemon pledge out and be productive while we ramble about people. Lemon pledge. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. I, I don't know. It's, it's the most common one. Okay, okay. So let's, let's get to it. And <laughs> yeah. we really aren't going to have as much of a structure for this one. We kind of just want to have a conversation about this. But th- there's one thing I do want to kind of start with. And it's something that as someone who reviews retro games, hmm. a lot of the games that I end up reviewing either don't have voiced lines, so to speak. Right. You know, you have sound effects and you have grunts and noises. And yeah. sometimes you have phrases. Hmm. 
really not much in the way of actual dialogue. Mm. And then you have a lot of stuff that was before video game voice acting became bigger. It was before they started spending more money on it. And it was really when you had a lot of voice actors that were kind of doing this in their spare time Mm. to fill in gaps of not having work or, you know, were new themselves at the time. And so, you know, they just got kind of lucky with their roles, Mm. right? Either way, it's interesting to kind of see how far it's come. It's really neat. You have some really good performers now. You have some amazing performances. And I think a lot of what we're going to discuss today is really going to be, you know, the stuff that really stands out to us. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we're going to have a little bit, you know, like I said, we're going to have a little bit more of a leaning towards more modern stuff just because of the way the industry is. Right, yeah. You know. But... Let, let's talk about a couple of couple of ones that might not be quite as modern. First of all, for me, I really think the best two examples of that is one that's kind of jokey and one that's not. Mm-hmm. My jokey one is John St. John as Duke Nukem. Ah, uh, yes. And the reason I bring up Duke Nukem is because that's one of the ones that I remember listening to Mr. Nukem. Mm-hmm. And I remember thinking, like, this isn't... This isn't, like, some great performance. It's not, like, I'm not arguing that. This is a guy who embodies a role. Yeah. Because he did it. You're used to his voice. He nails the one-liners. And he might also be part of the problem of why Duke Nukem doesn't translate well into a newer generation. And all I mean by that is I think they told him, I'm not blaming him specifically. I'm blaming the fact that, you know, they told him to play the character a certain way. And because this is, again, back then, maybe they didn't give him very good direction with it. And it's kind of, it's a character that's set in stone now when it could have gone a lot different. Right, I see. There's, there's no development, there's no evolution of, of his character. It's just Duke and that's it, you know. There's right. no, nothing else extra to put in there. But the reason why I said he was kind of my jokey, kind of, you know, silly entry mm. for this is because he's fantastic. Like, it's just, it's so fun to listen to the one-liners and just, you know. Yeah. No matter how bad they are, like, it's incredibly enjoyable. Well, I mean, the fact that he can make bad, like, such bad dialogue so enjoyable is a skill in itself. Because you can have, like, really bad lines and a really bad actor and then it just doesn't, it doesn't translate. But if you've got somebody like that, who has a distinct voice and recognizable that can deliver these lines and make it his own, you mm-hmm. know, and make it make it enjoyable, make it like you want to, you know, you want to know what he's going to say next as 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 a random thing, right? You know, and even if, like he could say he could make dad jokes cool, yeah, you know, sure, <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? Well, he is right, like you said. Certain people have that voice, no matter what they say, it's going to sound cool because you've gotten used to the voice and it's a cool sounding voice. Yeah. So for my kind of serious one, though, Mm. and, you know, this is a little bit later, but still we're talking about early PS2 and before that it was out on PC. Mm. And that's, to me, is James McCaffrey, who is better known as the voice of Max Payne. Oh, okay. Right. I'm I'm trying to think of his voice. It's been so long since I played that, so. It sounds like an everyman, and I think that's one of the reasons why it works. Okay. And I think... Specifically, I like it because of the noir feel, that quality. Yeah. It feels like it works so well with that the themes, and he gets into it, and there's emotion and, no pun intended, pain in <laughs> his voice. The, the scenes with the baby crying and oh, him walking along yeah. the bluff. Well, you can tell. It's creepy. You can tell that he understood or was given direction with the mm. script. And, you know, there's a lot to that. However, I'm going to say his best performance is probably Max Payne 3. Have you played Max Payne I've 3? I've played 3. So, Max Payne 3 is different from the other two. It's not set in a dingy city. It's set no, it's in, very uh, more. It's a lot more like bright and actiony and yeah, colorful. It's in Sao Paulo, I believe. Okay. And it's just, it feels like a completely different setting, but it's the same Max. And that's kind of part of the theme of that. Hmm. 
is you can run, you can lose yourself in the bottle, and you can try to change your life, but you're, you're still just going to be Max. You're going to be who you are. You're going to be Max Payne. Okay. He looks great with the shaved head, you know. Um, yeah, I do think he looked good. Yeah. The the line, some of the dialogue, it was weird. It was one of the first games that did that thing where sometimes when a character says something, it pops up the words to the dialogue on screen, like in kind of a stylized way. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. It, if you've ever played that, I don't know how good you are at those types of um, eh. games, but, you know, bullet time saves a lot of lives. It, it, it does. It does. And you should play those. The interesting thing is I had always heard stories that he kind of fell into the role. Like, it was almost like a an accident that mm. he started that role. And I guess either the stories aren't true or maybe I was confused about who that was because this guy... Has done other stuff. Um, I'm not going to go down his entire listing here, obviously. Sure. But he was in Alone in the Dark as um, Edward Carnby. Oh, okay. He's, he's, yeah, he's the main main dude. See, I couldn't remember if that was the main guy or mm. if that was... Um, yeah, it's been Con- so long Con- since Con- I played. But recently, he was in Jessica Jones, season two. No. Who he was is. he in that? So, I don't know if you've gotten to that episode yet. Ah, oh, yeah, that's true, because I didn't finish it. But like, there, I, there's, I, a, there's a guy who's like, he's like a movie producer is the best way I'll explain it. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know, yeah, okay. yeah that's, I know who he is. That's, that's McCaffrey. Really? And the thing is, he's not hitting the base. He's not, you know, you can tell he's not quite hitting right, it, but, yeah. but as soon as I read it, I was like, that is that guy. Because wow. I'd seen a picture of him before, and I was like, oh. But what's crazy to me is, before any of this, you know, he had already had... Experience because he was in many episodes of As the World Turns, I don't the know soap opera. I, I don't know what that See, is. See, I don't know how familiar you are with American soap. You, you know I, I what know soap s- operas? Right, you know, of yeah. course. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, he he was in several episodes of one of the bigger ones, which was called As the World Turns. Mm. But for me personally, and there's like five to ten percent of our audience who are going to get this without having to look it up. There used to be an action show called Viper, and it was about a dude with a silver car. It was about a dude with a silver car, and he was either the... I think he was the main character on Viper. Wow. And it's such a Knight Rider ripoff. Yeah, yeah. Except the car doesn't talk. He just has this super advanced car. Right. But I I believe this was like an early 90s show, and I'm not going to lie, young, young... Bane watched a lot of Viper. So. <laughs> oh, dear. All right. So who, who's someone that's kind of back, you know, like around this era that, you, that you're thinking, like early voice acting that really caught you? The earliest for me then, um, one of them, well, I will go with the obvious. I might just go straight in with Shelley Blonde as OG Lara Croft. Okay, now remind me, which games did she portray Laura in? She just uh, did the first one. Oh, the, only the first yeah. one. Shelly Shelley only did the first one. For as much as you mentioned her name, I figured she at least was the first two or three. No, she only did the one, and she... Like, I've, I've met her, and she's a lovely, lovely person. She's super, super nice. And you can still hear, hear it in her voice. Like when you speak to her and when she's like presenting and stuff like that, because she does she does a lot of voice um, voice work and voiceover um, for like adverts and you know like TV shows and radio and stuff like that. And like there there have been times where I've been watching TV and I'm like, is that you know? It's one of those like is is that her? Is that her? And so I have to like go on to like IMDb just to see and like try and find her and in her portfolio and stuff. But yeah, OG. Lara Croft. Now, uh, Lara's been portrayed by... I'm going to mention the other ones, just because... Just kind of out of respect, well, really. Well, hold on. Before oh, you oh, do that... What, what? I was just going to say, the only other Lara Croft I, at voice actress I know is Camilla L- Ludding- Ludington. Ludington. Yeah. And I know her, before she was Lara, I know her from Californication. Yes. Which um, I always make the joke, mm-hmm. you know, that, that if you want to see Lara Croft topless, you should go watch Californication Season 4. But but in all seriousness, she does a great job in that season. She's right. not a main character, but she is. She plays a decent sized role for that season. A, a decent sized role. Yeah, you know, I wasn't even going to make the tit joke. That was all you. <laughs> 
But no, she she does a great job with what they gave her in that. And so mm-hmm. when I heard, like, before the reboots came out, I heard that she was going to be Laura. And I was like, that sounds perfect. Because hmm. I knew she could at least act. Yeah, I mean, she doesn't do a... Like, for the, the, the storyline and, and everything, you know, she doesn't do a bad job at all. Um, I It kind of annoys me how... You know, it's like, I can do this. I can do this. All right, I can do that. You know, and it's like, okay, we get it. You can do it. Good for you. And and I know it's like, it's her trying to like encourage herself. And, you know, she's out there on her own, like just, you know, in the wilderness and trying to work out a way to survive. And survivor is born, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, like, it's just like after like about 20 times in, 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 in an hour, it's just like, okay, yeah, we get it. Good, good. Okay, you, yes, you can. Just do it then. <laughs> you just stop talking. Do it. But, um, but no, like, so, so, yeah, you mentioned she's, she does the reboots as the 2013 and Rise of the Tomb Raider. And I believe she's doing, she'll most likely be doing Shadow of the Tomb Raider too. Um, I believe so, yeah. Yeah. And um, then there's Judith Gibbons, who does Lara for Tomb Raider 2 and 3, who I always thought it was Alex Kingston that did the voice, because they have a very, very similar voice. Now, Judith gives Lara a more mature voice, a more serious voice. It's when she says, now let me get out of these wet clothes. That's the mature line, right? No, that's that's Shelley. Really? Yeah, that's that's the tutorial. I thought that was from you, two. No, no, you're right. That's, that's from, from that's one. From one. Yeah. When you okay. go in the pool, because that's how you end the tutorial. That's right. That's how you end Croft no, Manor. That's right. No, Judith is uh, at the end of two, and she's about to go in the shower, and she and then she's like, "Don't you think you've seen enough?" And then she picks up the shotgun and shoots the screen, and yeah, then it goes black. That's right. That's that's Judith. But, so, her delivery of some of the lines were a little bit, not bland, but in comparison to the first one, like, Shelley had more of a sass. You could tell she was from, like, a rich background and and educated and stuff like that, whereas, like, Judith's portrayal was a little bit more flat. Do they all, this is kind of a silly question, but do they all stick to the kind of same British dialect with her? For the most part, yeah. 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 Except for Camilla Luddington pronounces some things, and I'm like, do we say it like that? Really? There were a couple of words, and I was like, no, well, I don't say it like that. Not, not specifically to Laura Croft, but I've heard mm. you know people complain that certain voice actors, their characters are supposed to be from the certain part of the UK. Right, right. Or like, even just like, you know, just as an example, someone's supposed to have kind of a, a Geordie accent and then they say things that sure. don't sound like a Geordie accent. Right, no, so. yeah, no, for, for, in, in terms of that, they all sound, they're all like along the same line, upper right. class, okay. you know. Sure. So, so yeah, so that was my, you know, the thing with uh, Judith. Um, and then you've got um, Janelle Elliott, who uh, voiced Lara in uh, Last Revelation, Chronicles and Angel of Darkness. Now, in those ones, she seemed more sassy and and a bit kind of bitchy, actually. A little bitchy, a little, huh? little bit of a yeah, a little wow. bit. All right, you know. And then you got Keely Hawes, who um, was uh, she voiced her in Legend Underworld. So this is like the the kind of the Legend timeline, as as they call it, because Legend is technically a soft reboot. Yeah. And I'm sorry, I'm talking about the games more than the actresses here, but um, Legend of the World and Anniversary. And, you know, hers, her performance was, yeah, it was it was kind of a mix between Sassy and Shelley's portrayal, in my mm-hmm. opinion. Like, it wasn't flat. Uh, it was, it was kind of fun, but I, I don't think, I, I didn't feel like she was having as much fun as Shelley was, but... Yeah, so... But yeah, she stuck it, around for three games. Yeah, so it was only Keely and Janelle and now Camilla, essentially, that have done three games each. Yeah. I'm going to be honest. I, I knew that multiple people had done her voice. I didn't realize mm-hmm. exactly how many people. Yeah. I, I actually had not guessed it was quite a number quite that high. Mm. Actually, that reminds me. I think Keely has also done the site, like the other games, the um, Temple of Osiris and... Never remember the other one. I never. I know remember the one the you're talking about. Yeah. Um, Are you I, sure you're not just thinking about Lara Croft Go? 
No, no, no. It was the. It was, there, it was there's the, another this light, the same format as right. Tempo Osiris, and I can never remember the name. Yeah, of it. yeah. I don't know why I always forget that one, but yeah, probably because so, you've never played it on stream. I'm that's guess that's, that's true, actually, and and I will do soon. But it will always be Shelley for me. Like it doesn't matter. Well, let me ask you, like Camilla, obviously, I know had an acting career beforehand, and supposedly is getting more roles now. Mm-hmm. What about the others? Like, have any of them gone on to do? Much else? Do you know if if they've done stuff before? You know, right? I know Judith hasn't. Judith did like one other thing, and yeah. that was it. And she just kind of stopped. It's it's amazing to me. You have almost two extremes. You have voice actors and actresses that it seems like they did these key roles, especially when it was earlier stuff like mm-hmm. this, and they did nothing else. Right, like yeah. their other career, their other jobs and stuff were in a different field or different career, mm. and then you have people you know the the other end who's like oh that person voiced this person and you know especially with the more modern voice actors it's like they're in everything yeah you know tv yeah. cartoons oh I, yeah i know you, you know live that. action um you know video games mm-hmm. it's, it's like tons of stuff like um we'll get to some of that in a minute yeah so Kind of rounding out like the kind of older school stuff, we, mm. we kind of I feel like we have to talk about Charles Martinet, and most people don't know that name, but for those who do, they know him as the voice of Mario. Ah, oh, okay. He's also the voice of Luigi, Wario, and he's done some other additional voices for the Mario games. And I know that some people are going to say like it's hard to throw him on there because most of his voice work is again sounds it's you know him yelling yahoo yeah. and stuff like that and you know saying little quick lines for mario kart i'm not gonna win and stuff like that wah. yeah wah, wah. Wah. <laughs> but there are a few games luigi's mansion is a good example mario sunshine has a little bit and you know even though there's not much in mario odyssey like in some of the later games they did let him have more lines mm. You know, so it's also just something I feel like we need to throw this in there because I play so many Mario games. I feel yeah. I would feel like I was doing him a disservice. Sure. You know, and especially since I think he started around Mario 64. I think he did one game before Mario 64. Mm. But that's kind of the timeline, you know, where he started. And he's been doing it since. And he also, um, he did do, you know, he does stuff. Uh, for a couple other games, but not much. Like, he doesn't need to. They kind of have him on retainer to do right, Mario yeah. for Smash Brothers and Kart and Tennis and all these he's, games. He's kind of typecast now. But he was, in the original Skies of Arcadia, he was Vigoro. That means nothing to me. You've never played Skies of Arcadia. Nope. We're going to fix this. Okay. You like Final Fantasy. I do. You will like Skies of Arcadia. Which seems we're talking about voice acting. Um, with like When it comes to Final Fantasy, because 10 was the first one that had any voice acting in it. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the reason I say that is because I don't want to talk about the laugh. <laughs> I don't want to do it. No, stop, stop. I don't... See, this is why I avoided it. This is why... Oh, my God. Okay. Anyway, so that kind of rounds out, for me, you know, that initial, like, grouping. Mm. But who would you say... Who do you use a true badass? Who voices a true badass character? Badass character? Yeah. DC Douglas. And tell the people at home who he voices. He voices Albert Wesker. In Resident Evil. No one knows who that five. is. Five. I'm just kidding. I'm <laughs> that That's like his main role. You, you, you probably recognize him. Now, he is, he's another act, actor who, um, voice actor who does a lot of additional voices and, you know, sort of like small roles in games when, you know, like you have the, the, the bigger names doing the main voices. But he also um, he's in uh, Persona 5. And four, I think, as well. He's a character in that. He's also a Legion in Mass Effect. Oh, yeah. He is. That's yep. right. And he's a Raven in Tekken 6, which I only learned recently. I was like, oh, oh. I think I knew that. And I mm. think 
my distaste for Tekken 6 was strong enough that I just forgot oh, it again. Oh, wow. Okay. I didn't like 6. Eh, now, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not huge on the Tekken games anyway. Sure. Not, you're, you're a bigger fan of those than I am, and I like fighting games, but... Mm. Six just did a lot of stuff with its like pseudo. Start. We're getting off subject. <laughs> Point is, tell tell the tell the listeners what DC Douglas does at Dragon Con. Oh, he he does er, like he does erotic fan fiction readings, and they are fantastic. Like I haven't actually been fortunate enough to see one because every time we've gone to go, it's just been packed. it's been packed. We, we, we've we tried to go to. twice now, right? Yeah, we tried to go twice, and we tried to go under his recommend. Like, obviously, like he was going to recommend it, yeah. but you know, because um, I I met him last year at Dragon Con. We we got to talk to him for a little bit, and yeah. he was doing like a new cartoon. He was talking to us about yeah and yeah yes he's, he's got a cartoon going on his youtube channel and and all that good stuff and you know he does a lot of cons and he he is he's a lovely guy he is filthy and he apparently drinks a lot and he, he does like to party it seems and good good for him but and, and he seems to look after himself as well I've, oh I've, sure sure he's ripped he's, he was in he's, shape yeah he's, I, saw, I saw those short sleeves i saw what he was rocking damn i've seen his belly now, He's got abs for days. Okay, I didn't. I didn't look at his stomach. I, no, there, there was a picture from Dragon Con actually, and he's like lifting his shirt up, and you can. Oh, see Oh, you see did show me yeah. that. You did. Okay, I forgot. And I was about like, that. oh my, he's cheeky. But um, no, he, but he's cheeky. <laughs> oh my god. But uh, yeah, he he's you. You probably will know him as Albert Wesker in, in Resident Evil Five, and I think Umbrella Chronicles. And who is Albert Wesker's nemesis? Chris. Right. It's Roger Craig Smith. Now, <laughs> that's, a, that's a nice, uh, nice segue there. Yes, thank you. I worked on that. No, um, <laughs> so the reason I bring this up is I always liked the voice acting for Chris. Really? I I never thought it was like great, but I, I thought it was fine, and it definitely, you know, he's no Leon, but I thought Chris Leon. did a just good job. But you know what's crazy about that? Do you know who Chris is? Who the voice actor for no. Chris is? So, I just told you his name. Mm -hmm. But Roger Craig Smith is also Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, wow. Oh, no wonder he, No wonder people hate him. Nobody likes Chris. So, like, Sonic Forces, Sonic Boom, like, pretty much any modern Sonic he's been the voice of. Except for, I don't know... No, he is. He's, the, he's Sonic in the cartoon. The Sonic... Boom cartoon also. Oh. So pretty much like any of the modern Sonics, he's been the voice of Sonic. Wow. You now know. is it, um? so which, because he isn't like OG Chris. I think he's, I know he's 5, 6, Marvel vs. So he's, he's the later ones then. I don't think he's the original. He's Chris Roydfield then. Yes, he is Chris Roydfield. The one that nobody likes. I don't dislike him. <laughs> Look, I think at some point Chris was punching a boulder, and I think he realized, you know what? I've had enough. <laughs> I've had enough of this had shit. had enough of Wesker's shit. <laughs> and I'm sure he looked over at DC Douglas, and he was like, this shit ends now. No, I don't know. <laughs> the point is, I, I didn't hate Chris, and, and other than some really silly moments, I actually really like Chris's stuff in RE5. Yeah, it wasn't He's bad. great to play in Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Uh, I can't remember if I played that, or I, I, put, I played the demo of one of them. And he's Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, or Marvel vs. Capcom 4. Mm. He's Chris also. Right. But here's the thing. So, I was like, this guy's, you know, I'm okay with this guy. Mm. And I I thought these were two different people. And then I read that they were the same person. And I realized that the thing I like him from the most is that he was Ezio Alditore. Wow. Yes. I had no clue. I seriously thought those were two different people with very similar names. And I was wrong. They're the same person. Huh. So Roger Craig Smith also did the voice for... Probably my favorite Assassin's Creed character. No, definitely my favorite Assassin's Creed character. Probably my favorite Assassin's Creed game. Okay. So, quick story. I played the first Assassin's Creed and I was bored shitless. Mm -hmm. And then two came out 
and I, I went over to a friend's house, and they were playing two, mm. and I wasn't going to get two because I was so bored with one. Sure. But I was just listening to the story, and honest to God, part of what brought me into the character that made me want to help Ezio get revenge for the death of his family was that I felt like he did an amazing job with the voice acting. And yes, he is a little flat in some places. Mm. There are some lines I will never argue that there are some parts that he comes up flat. Right. But the opening and some of those really the bigger cutscenes and everything, mm. I loved his performance as yeah. Ezio. And for a little while, to me, you know, they've they've changed who the assassins are almost every game. Yeah. But Ezio got three games. He just he was in Soul Calibur five. Fantastic. Mm. And I will always to me, whether he's, you know, Royd Field, whether he's Sanic, mm -hmm. whether he's whoever, to me he's gonna be best known for Ezio. Ezio. Yeah. yeah. And I, I really enjoyed that. Is there anyone like that for you that's played like a bigger role, but you know them for like a smaller one? Uh, um, probably um, Jennifer Hale, actually, because now I I actually recognised her uh, uh, sort of earlier on the the, the games I know her from uh, Knights of the Old Republic, and she's uh, Bastila. Wouldn't that be Bastila? No, it's Bastila. Is it? Yeah, that's, how, so that's how they say it. It's been so long since I played have, that game. We we have so many debates as to like how, how yeah on how things are said. I'm, I'm I'm actually going to defer with to to you on this one because it's been so long. I played that game when it first came out and I didn't finish it. So I'm pretty sure it's Bastilla. Okay. Now I I didn't realize this and and until recently when I replayed it, but she was also Alexandra Roivas in Eternal Darkness. Yes. Yes, um, and, and that's a role I actually really liked her. Yeah, role. and and that was fantastic. And she she was also the um, Zelatoth, uh, the, the I think it's the green one in the. I, I am pretty sure you're right. I think I we we talked about this a couple of days ago though. That entire game actually had some really good voice acting. Oh yeah, not it not, had not good scene. Not everybody you would know. Her dad, I guess it mm. was, like the scene where he's going crazy. Mm. There's a couple. I think there's a couple different versions of that, but yeah, like it's just some really good stuff in Eternal yeah. Darkness. It's it's a very underrated game, and her performance as Alexandra was was also pretty darn good. Like I recognised her from Metal Gear Solid. Uh, she's a uh, Naomi Hunter in Metal Gear. Mm, in Metal wow. Gear Solid, yeah. I didn't, know, I didn't know she was in that. See, when you when you now. If you go back and play the game, and then you play Knights of the Old Republic, and you you can you can tell now her voice doesn't really change or alter that much through games, because like even as like female Shepherd in Mass Effect, that that's 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 another role which I don't know whether people would know that that was her, and and another small kind of role that you know you can you can tell like oh I recognise that voice, I've heard it in this game. And then, you know, it's whether you remember the name, is uh, Diablo 3. She's uh, Leah. See, I haven't played enough Diablo 3. Uh, I, I know okay. you really like that, but yeah, uh, I yeah. haven't played enough to... Yeah, I've been playing that again recently, but uh, yeah, she's she's Leah. So she, like I say, like her, her performance in Metal Gear Solid was also really good. You know, when she's like, uh, it's an anti-freezing peptide and stuff like that. I, and I, I just like, I remember the lines because of, she's got a really nice voice. Now, the reason I purposely led you into this question uh -huh. was because most people would say that her most iconic role is as Femship. See, I, I didn't realize that. Yeah. I didn't and, realize and for anybody who might not know Femship, I, of course, mean uh, in the Mass Effect, Mass Effect yeah. trilogy mm -hmm. um, series. There's four of them now, but I don't know if anyone's still counting the fourth one. <laughs> but you can pick to play as a male or female. Yeah. And apparently, from what I've always heard... It was a little bit difficult to do her parts because they wrote all the lines for the male character and then had to slightly alter a couple, but not many, enough because they needed the lines for the male and female character to match up. Mm. Which makes sense, you know, if you didn't have a matchup, you'd have to do more work and the game would take longer to get out. And there, there, there's, a, there's a lot to that. And I, I understand where that's coming from. Yeah. 
That's that's just some some logistics right there. Mm. But I also get the difficulty in being a woman who may enunciate, who may say things differently, and you have to make all these words sound just as badass or mm. just as cool or show just as much emotion. Mm. So I get that. Mm. But I also... I never made it past Mass Effect 1. So. No, I didn't, unfortunately, either. So so you don't know. It could be her best role. It, it could be her best role, yeah. But, I mean, for me personally, it's probably as Naomi Hunter. Okay. So you brought up Metal Gear Solid. Yes. And we definitely want to talk about Snake, the man himself. David Hater. All right. So my question is... Has David Hayter done anything else other than Snake? He probably has. I know he does a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff because he actually... Did he produce or was he a writer for X-Men? You're correct. I don't remember. And I want to say you're right that he was a writer. But I th- I, I'm pretty sure he was a writer. He, he's done stuff like that for a couple of different movies, supposedly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He's a person because... I Okay. So, I have played Metal Gear games. Mm -hmm. I've never gotten really into Metal Gear games. Uh, I played Metal Gear Solid. A friend and I beat it. Mm -hmm. I played 99% of Metal Gear Solid 5. I played 2, and I was the only one who wasn't so invested in the story. Like, the rest of my friends were all upset that you were playing Raiden and all that. Raiden. Yeah. I, I just... I don't know. Like... I like the series, but I've never gotten into it as much to check all that out. Mm. But, of course, there was a big deal about Kiefer Sutherland taking over in Part 5. Yeah. And this is kind of something that's that's been interesting for a little while. is about these bigger kind of Hollywood names Mm -hmm. coming in. Like, people who were well-established. You know, we've kind of talked about people who've done some TV or done one movie or something like that, you know, before they start getting into voice acting. But we're talking about people who, you know, are big names and then coming over. Kiefer Sutherland was a big name already and Mm -hmm. then came over to do this because whatever reason Kojima liked his voice or, you know, whatever the the Konami decided. I I still don't 100% know the reasons why. I just know people were upset that Hater was... um, Replaced. I know there was like a whole petition or whatever to yeah. get him not only put... They, they wanted like a second audio track for the game that was Hater doing the voice. And I was mm-hmm. just like, they're never going to do that. That's yeah, going to cost a it, lot of money. It's a shame. I mean, he, you know, he played the role well. And it was just... It was something along the lines of like he needed to sound different or... I, I, I can't remember. There were, there were lots of little things. For all the complaints mm. about Metal Gear Solid 4... Like, mm-hmm. I sat through that, like, 41-minute cutscene at the beginning and tried not to do anything else because it would have been so easy. But I have heard some amazing stuff about his performance sure. in that. Yeah. You know, he's playing this old, aged, dying person who knows he's a clone. Mm-hmm. Or something similar. I can't, spoilers. I, yeah, sorry, spoilers. And, mm-hmm. and I don't even know the whole plot because explaining the plot to Metal Gear is... Yeah, it's... it's, it's um... can be a challenge. <laughs> um, I have had people sit down who, who prof- profess know the plot very well. And even they struggle to tell me, yeah. Oh my God, that one night at IHOP with Carrie. Like sitting down and tra- him trying to explain... <laughs> The, the kind of the futuristic stuff behind Metal Gear Solid, uh, the, like the whole world. Oh, my God. Infinite Pancakes wasn't enough. Oh, wow. It wasn't enough. But, so uh, we were talking the other day about how this kind of started, for me at least, is mm. I remember them announcing a PS1 game with Bruce Willis. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. It's called Apocalypse. Apocalypse, yeah. And it just, that was the whole selling point. Mm. You don't hear much else about that game at all. I plan on reviewing that game one day. That's that's a retro review I want to do one day. Yeah. Because that's the only notable thing in the game. Now, I played the demo because it came on like a demo disc. Yeah. But I, I've never actually played the game. And like I said, you never hear anything about it. Like supposedly the graphics were pretty good at the time. I remember the demo looking kind of nice. But other than Bruce Willis's performance... 
Yeah, who yeah. knows? I just I just remember the front cover because it's like kind of like got his face uh, as it is in game. Like it's not like an actual like photo of him. It's like in game, you know, as if it was captured kind of thing. Right. Um, at the front, and then it's got like a like the A for apocalypse or something. Yes, you're you're right. In like red or whatever, and that that's that's pretty much all I remember of that. Like I've never played it myself either. And I I always thought it was like based off of a film or something that they were going to do or like a comic and they just got managed to get Bruce Willis to be a part of it or something. But I, I don't actually know, you know, the story behind it. I just remember seeing the front cover and that's it. Sure. Let's let's talk about a couple of the actors that have kind of come into video games, roles that we actually like. For me, I gotta start with Ray Liotta. Ray Liotta did the voice for Tommy Versetti, Mm -hmm. who was the main protagonist of Grand Theft Auto Vice City. He, probably my favorite Ray Liotta movie is Goodfellas. Um, That's a good Classic. That's a classic. Mm -hmm. I love Goodfellas. But he did a great job. And he gets very emotional at some points in the role. I've seen Mm -hmm. clips, like behind the scene clips of him doing the voice for Versetti. And you can tell he doesn't seem like he's phoning it in. He seems like he's really into it. Yeah. He does an amazing job. The whole end mission, spoiler alert, when you have all the guys come into your mansion at the end. And it's basically the scene from Scarface. Scarface, yeah. You know, that, you really get this kind of emotion from him that works. And especially, Mm -hmm. again, you know, this is back PS2 days. This is really before it... Voice acting being this kind of level was, 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 ta- was yeah it was a staple seri- before yeah. it was serious, and so Tommy Tommy Versetti him Ray Liotta playing that role as Tommy Versetti like I think that's one of the reasons why Vice City is a lot of people's favorite you know soundtrack course yeah the the game was improved from the previous one they didn't really ruin anything they just improved on it and then you have this great you know, performance. The only problem was compare some of his scenes with other people who weren't as good with voice acting as him. You know, there were some other good voice actors in that game, mm. but some of the scenes with other people, you're like, mm, yeah, you can tell the, the level you, of difference. The, yeah, here. yeah, you can see the difference in caliber when it comes to to the uh, the the payroll. <laughs> right. My other one probably. You know, and I, I don't know if you've played a lot of these games, but mine's going to be Michael Ironside as Sam Fisher. Sam Fisher, yeah. yeah. I, no, you see, I like those games, um, but I'm not very good because I'm terrible at stealth. Yeah. I, lo- as much I, as I love them. I'm not great at stealth, but I actually really enjoy a good stealth game. And Splinter Cell 1, Splinter Cell 3, Splinter mm-hmm. Cell Conviction, all great games. Yeah. Definitely. Um, and uh, Blacklist, I think, was the last one. And it was pretty good, too. But it was more, like, action-y. Yeah. And uh, I think that's the one that doesn't have Michael Ironside. Yeah, I think it was one of the later ones yeah. that didn't. I remember enjoying it, but it's not one I wanted to go back. But I knew Michael Ironside uh, from several different roles, of course. But mostly, I knew him because he was the second captain on Sequest DSV. I didn't know. Do, I didn't do know you know did. what Sequest DSV is? No. <laughs> it is Star Trek, but underwater. Nice. And it started with the guy from Jaws, I think. Oh, I can't remember his name right now. I'm going to feel so bad. I, it's like three in the morning, so I've kind of gone blank on yeah. names. <laughs> but the important part is we don't talk about Highlander 2. No. That, we do not that, talk about Highlander 2. Uh, is there any any others like weird roles that celebrities have done? Weird. I mean, the, the, there are a few well, roles that, roles that you enjoy, but like, you know, like a great a great example is somebody like Lance Bass doing Sephiroth, yeah. or uh, Haley Joel Osment was that was it surprising. was Sora, yeah, and he did a great job. He, I, uh, oh no, I'm thinking of Elijah Wood because I think Elijah Wood has done. A game, and I, it, it it escapes me which one he's been in. Right. But uh, I know he's done he's done a few things. I, I mean, there were there were a lot of like notable um, roles that actors have done. Like 
uh, one I I remember when I first played Oblivion, and the um, Septim Muriel, whatever his name is, Patrick Stewart. Oh, it's Picard. Yeah, yeah. it's Patrick Stewart. Yeah. Right. And I, I completely I like I'd, I'd sort of heard his voice, and I was like. Really? Yeah. Huh. Now, he's not in the game for more than like 15 minutes, though, right? Right, yeah. It's just like that beginning bit, I think. I don't even know. Now, I've re- I never beat Oblivion because out of no, all I those yeah. games, I think that's the one I played probably the least. Because I played a lot of Morrowind and a lot of, um, well, not a lot, but a good bit of Skyrim. But mm. I think I played Oblivi- Oblivion the beat. I think no, I played no. Oblivion the <laughs> least. And honestly. Yeah, I don't even know if he comes back at the end. But I, 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 cool. I have no idea. But even just a small role like that, like uh, there, are, there are some like actors and actresses that um, you know, get involved in games because they actually want to be. Like they, they ask to be. And one of those, one of those uh, that I didn't know again, that you know, was a was a gamer. It's Matthew Perry from Friends. Yes, Chandler Bing. Chandler M. Bing. Chandler Muriel Bing. His middle name is Muriel? Yeah. <laughs> I did not know that. I don't, yeah, I don't watch you, you don't. Words. You don't find out until like season eight or something what the M stands for. He he enjoyed Fall... Like he spent hours on Fallout 3. And so he's he sort of like pushed to be in Fallout New Vegas. And that's got to be nice to be like, I'm a huge fan of this. Yeah. And I have this reputation from this other thing I do. Let me be in your game. Right, yeah. I'll I'll work cheap. And it seems, like, I can, like, he plays like an antagonist, I believe, in New Vegas. I I actually haven't played more than the, I played the intro of New Vegas. I I, I haven't either, but he, uh, he plays a character called Benny. And it seems like the Benny seems like a kind of gangster type uh, role, and from what I've seen, the clips I've seen, you know, it seems like he he does a good job at being, you know, a kind of bad guy. Uh, and and like although I can hear the vo- like hear his voice, I think he's a better voice actor when it comes to trying to get out of typecast roles. You know, mm. like like he, he usually, you know, he's in seen in like a lot of rom coms and stuff oh, sure, like that, yeah. because he's you know he's typecast in that, unfortunately, because that's what he does. But I think in this, but he's not in the new Lost in Space. No, that was Matt LeBlanc. You're thinking of. Damn it! You're right. <laughs> Sorry, I got my friends cast mixed. You up. got your friends mixed up. I I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> yeah, those two were interchangeable to me. Whoops. Oh, Matt, Matt, Matthew Perry, Matt, 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 yeah. I, I get it, I get it. Let's talk about a couple people that definitely had a name beforehand, but have become kind of synonymous with their roles. Mm. And for me, that's pretty much anyone in the Batman Arkham games. Mm-hmm. And the reason is because you have Kevin Conroy, right? Yep. Who, of course, is Batman. And then you have Mark Hamill, yeah. who, of course, had a name before he started doing the Joker mm-hmm. uh, for a little thing called Star Wars that nobody yeah. ever watches. Yeah, the, the, the Star Wars. The Star War happened. The yeah. Star War. <laughs> but, no, seriously, the, the Batman games, you know, you've got two amazing performances there, mm-hmm. right? Then you've got a lot of other stuff. Like, you've got Troy Baker voiced... Um, Killer Croc, and you have Arlene Sorkin, who originally did, you know, in the cartoon, in, you know, Batman the Animated Series, and then, oh, yeah, yeah. and in the first game, she did Harley Quinn, and then Tara Strong went on to kind of take her place. Is Tara Strong um, a Powerpuff Girl? I think so. I'm pretty sure. Tara Strong is another say one. Bubbles. I don't know which one. I'm pretty sure you're right. But Tara Strong is another person who has, like, a really long IMDb page. Right, yeah, and it's just full of cartoons and games. But we really don't have enough time to sit here and break down all of of the Arkham games. But seriously, Conroy is... Whenever I read a Batman comic, it's the voice I hear in my my head. He's like the Morgan Freeman of of voices. And I hate the argument over, like, who's the definitive Joker, because I think we've had some really good performances as Joker. Mm -hmm. But whenever I read a comic, 
I hear Mark, Mark Hamill's, Hamill's Joker yeah. in my head. Especially, I've been reading Gotham City Sirens mm-hmm. lately, which is done by Paul Denny, who worked on the yeah, Batman the Animated Series. He was one of the writers. Right. And so when I when Joker pops up in that, I hear, you know, I hear Joker's, I hear Mark Hamill as the Joker. Sure. And for me, those games were darker continuations of a TV series, a cartoon that I loved. So you have all these original voice actors or you have these people who, you know, come in. We, we just don't talk about Nolan North doing Penguin. Other than that, <laughs> it's all really good, you yeah. know. And I can't, I, if you've never, if you're someone out there and has never played an Arkham game, as odd as that might be, and you love comic books at all, I would really suggest it, you know, oh, put fantastic. the game, put the game on easy if you want mm-hmm. and just go through just and listen fun. to some of the, the dialogue. Yeah. Like they, especially Gotham City or sorry, uh, Arkham City. Arkham, yeah. You know, they do some really amazing stuff in there. Mm-hmm. And um, you you mentioned Troy Baker. Now, there there are a few names that are just known. Synonymous with video game voice acting. Exactly. And that is one of the names. Like, probably arguably the most, um, like, the, 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 the most popular role that he's done is probably Joel. Well, real quick before we get into that, the reason I actually mention. I mentioned Nolan North about the yeah. the joke about the penguin, and he's of course one of those people like that. Mm-hmm. And I mentioned Troy Baker because he is one of the few voice actors that can say he has voiced Batman, Robin, uh, who was the character I just named, Killer Croc, yeah. and the Joker, all in not just games. But he's done it for DC's animated movies as well. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. And so he's bounced around. He's been Two Face. He was Two Face in uh, one of the one of the games. I can't remember which one. I think that might have been Arkham Knight. Don't quote me on that though. I'm not playing. No. But but you know that's like even if just that was his resume, mm-hmm. that would be an amazing. Resume. He's also done voices for like Full Metal Alchemist and a lot of other anime that I've never watched. Yeah. But you're talking about a role that is easily one that if he had just done The Last of Us, mm-hmm. that's a role that you could hold him up on a pedestal just oh, for that. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And I know a lot of people, a lot of people like to, now that the game is out and passed and done... A lot of people like to go, well, it's not as good as everybody remembers. Or, you know, there's still all these problems. Do they? Some people do. Really? Yeah, there are people that do that. Well, people can be wrong. (laughs) But there's this video of him and whoever the girl that plays Ellie. Ashley Johnson. Both of them are fantastic. Mm -hmm. Now, I will say I definitely remember Joel more than I did Ellie, just in the sense that there are some amazing moments with him. But those two did a live reading, and I yeah. believe it is still on YouTube. I think yeah, you can yeah. still find it. And you can tell, one, not all of it, but some of that dialogue is really powerful. Yeah. Especially towards the beginning. There there are some fantastic scenes, and the, the mocap is incredible right. as well. And Ashley Johnson, you know, she she does a great job as a kind of like you know fourteen year old, or I, I think she's fourteen. It was it wasn't until like years and years after I thought I recognize the name Ashley Johnson, but I I don't know where. And the only thing that I've ever seen her in, and she's done she's done a ton of stuff now since, and she's done. A lot more voice acting work. She's also done some live action acting. Yeah, right? yeah, because yeah, that, that's how I know her is from What Women Want with Mel Gibson. Okay, I've never seen she, that movie. She, I know that that movie she's, exists. She's but I've never his seen daughter. It. Oh, wow. I, I remember seeing her in the previews, but I never saw the movie. Yeah, and she's also a waitress in Avengers? Sure. I think I think she's she she pops up at some point, but yeah, and and like and she's also uh, I I've played uh, Minecraft Story Mode, and I've not played through the whole lot, but I've played through like ninety percent of it, and she plays a character called Petra, 
And I didn't recognize like the voice. Like it, it to me, it's two different voices. Oh, I, see, I watched some of your videos on mm-hmm. that. So yeah, yeah. So I, I, I didn't realize, but she's done a ton of stuff. She's done a ton of cartoons as well as games. But again, like Ellie is probably her most, you know, notable role. Yeah. Going back to Troy Baker for a minute, yeah. I'm shocked that you didn't bring up his role in Silent Hill Two. He was James Sunderland. You know, I didn't even realize that that was him. I could have sworn it was somebody else, but but maybe. I I guess you're right. I mean, mean, I looked it up to make sure because somebody said it. And I was like, oh, let me make sure of that. Because as soon as they said it, I was like, that does kind of sound like him. I didn't know. I remember him most because in World of Warcraft, he's Gul'dan. Yes. Yes. In, in the game, I'm, not yeah. in the movie, but in the game, he's Goldan. I don't know who was in the movie, but for me, I think one of his more standout roles and one of the roles that where I was like, okay, I actually really like this guy. I don't care if he's everywhere and he's getting oversaturated mm. or whatever. In Far Cry 4, he was Pagan Min, who was the bad I'm not, guy. I've not played that. You should, if nothing else, because the game, in my opinion, isn't as good as Far Cry 3. Mm-hmm. Like, it's kind of just a reskin Far Cry 3. Yeah. But you should go look up some of his scenes as the bad guy. Because they're fantastic. They did not give him as much to do as Voss. Who, Voss was um, Michael Mando. And uh, funny enough, you know what he was in and I didn't realize it was him until I, I looked it up later? What? So Voss is, uh, like, he wasn't even in the game originally. And he came and auditioned for, like, a different character. Like, a bad guy character. Hmm. And they liked his performance so much, they gave him a big part in the game. Yeah. Um, even though, spoiler alert, he's not the main boss. He's, like, an underling boss. But, two, he got a web series where he played Voss, like, torturing people. Wow. I didn't and, know that. and he came to the audition, like, dressed in full... No, I, I yeah, like I, I heard and that. Everything. And heard that's that. why the character looks so much like him is because they did that. Because that, yeah, or because he actually... did that. But he was in Spider-Man: Homecoming. He was Mac Gargan, the Scorpion. He had the scorpion tattoo oh, on his what? neck. Oh yes, no, I can see it now. Yeah. And I don't consider that a spoiler because if you know comics at all, you know Mac Gargan is the Scorpion. But anyway, that might be a small spoiler. Sorry. I... Not really. And the movie's been out a while. Yeah, it's it's fine. It's fine. But, but no, I didn't know that. I, I know we got kind of sidetracked with mm. um, with Far Cry, but I will say also, you know, us talking about Troy Baker, mm-hmm. he's also in the Uncharted series, mm-hmm. along with his oversaturated buddy, Nolan <laughs> Nord. <laughs> oversaturated buddy. And what's funny is, like, those two, whenever you refer to voice actors in video games, it's either, you know, it's either one or the other. They're both like Goliaths in the industry. And what, I, you know, I, I always, I almost thought at one point that they were kind of like rivals, like friendly rivals. It's like, oh, you know, how many big roles can each of these have, right? Right, sure. And, but then I, I, I realized that they actually work together a lot more than, <laughs> than yeah. I, and because you mentioned, I'm aren't, sure. aren't they both in The Last of Us? Yeah. 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 Um, so Nolan North is David yeah. in The Last of Us. Right. And you mentioned Uncharted. And of course, that's like Nolan's like a biggest, probably biggest and one of the best roles he does is Nathan Drake. Mm-hmm. And Troy is. Sam Drake. Which one of them do you think Claudia Black hits on more? Oh, definitely Nate. Really? I, l- I love Claudia. That's another. But Sam. I love. I do love Claudia Sam. Black's great. Claudia Black, it, she has got a, a, a really. She's like the mini Jennifer Hale to me because she has a distinct voice. Yeah. I really only knew her from Farscape. I and knew- I know she's been in a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. I knew her from that and. I always thought she was British, but apparently she's like. She's a Kiwi or something? Yeah, she's New Zealand. Yeah. But that's the thing. that That's what she's known for is her interchangeable accent because she does a British accent so well. So oh, yeah. she tends to just like fall into that automatically, uh, especially for roles. She was also in um, Stargate, the uh, SG-1 series. Right, the series. Yeah, yeah she's she, in she, the series. Yeah, she appears later on, but she's also in that. So those are the two things. 
that she that, that she's in. But she's she would actually play a really good Lara Croft, not just voice but visually as well. Mm-hmm. Just just throwing that out there. Isn't Troy Baker also Booker DeWitt in Bioshock Infinite? Yes. So I give him credit for Booker, but what I really always think of when I think of Bioshock Infinite is Booker Catch. Because every time Elizabeth throws you something, she's like, Booker oh, Catch. Oh, right, Booker Catch. Okay. Have you not played that game? I have, but like it was a while ago. Did you beat it? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Because the end, that that was you. You mentioned a, a live sequence between the Last of Us people, right? Yeah, and um, there was also him and whoever played uh, Elizabeth uh, is Courtney Draper, who I was about to bring up. Thank ah, you. Yeah, there you go. And they did because they did a song together. Oh yeah. Okay, I did see that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so. I'm not going to spend too much time on her, but she is fantastic. And you want to talk about getting into a character, the moments where it's really breaking down into Elizabeth's past and her realizing what was actually going on with her life. And Mm. at the end, when I will not spoil this part, but just at the end, when everything's going on. Just the end. (laughs) She has some amazing moments in there. Yeah. And I, I was like, this woman is really good at drama. And I found out why. Because she was in another American soap opera called The Bold and the Beautiful, Beautiful. Now, for like 80 plus episodes. Wow, okay. See, there's a lot of, although we, we've talked about like American shows, uh, which ones, but the, that, that's another thing where some of these voice actors and actresses do a lot of TV stuff. Like, I mentioned DC Douglas. He does a lot of TV stuff, too. He d- he does a lot of, like, sort of one-off episodes and stuff like that. And Oh, I, it, we would be here for six episodes trying to talk about some of these guys and girls that we're talking about that did two episodes of Mel- or Melrose Place. Yeah, or, and you ER. Know, and... ER, great example. Like, just some of the stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, for me... Like, talking about TV shows and stuff like that, I always forget about, oh, uh, what was her name? She played um, GLaDOS. Oh, uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Ellen McLean. Ellen McLean, that's yes. it. So. I love that. That that character is just yeah. amazing. The, 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 the whole, like, Portal 2 has just three fantastic characters. Yeah. That's all you need. But I was researching for mm-hmm. this podcast, mm-hmm. and I forgot that Stephen Merchant, who's in Portal 2... Is the... Wheatley. Um, Wheatley, yeah. Yes. I forgot that he is the creator of the British office, right? Yeah. He's one of the, one of the writers, yeah. See, I didn't... I didn't... From what I was reading, like, he was, like, the driving force behind it or he, him, and, him and Ricky Gervais work a lot, like, together. together. Well, yeah. well, they have that podcast they do together. Yeah. With, with Carl Pilkington. Carl Pil- oh. Pilkington. Carl, he's great. I think I said that correctly. Yeah. Yeah. Pilkington, yeah. I'm surprised I didn't get a bless him out of that. <laughs> nearly, nearly. He's, he's great. Yeah, he, Stephen Merchant. Now, I don't really like him overall, but he does have a great voice he, for, for And these he did roles. that role perfectly. Yeah. And Portal 2 really is brought to life by GLaDOS, but... My favorite GLaDOS stuff is probably from Poker Night 2. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Okay, so it's a bunch of different characters from a lot of games that are owned or that company mm. has worked with. Like um, Brock Samson is in there. Okay. Uh, from Venture Brothers. Yeah, yeah, And like Sam and Max and... Uh, the, the robot from Borderlands, Claptrap. Claptrap, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, you know, GLaDOS. And just, I don't know. It's, that game is fun. I, I actually need to reinstall that. I, I her voice. And she, she does, doesn't she do a cameo in... Uh... Well, she's in Pacific Rim, which is the other that's thing it. that most yeah, people... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I was going to mention um, that. Uh... And that's because somebody showed Guillermo del Toro Portal 1, I think. Right. Or maybe it was two. I can't remember. They showed him one of those games, and he started talking to her. He actually went to her 
And then I think they had to work out something to like use her voice or something. Right, yeah. There was, there was probably some, you know, some kind of like release of rights or whatever. Uh, her disembodied voice and her her script. Also, J.K. Simmons. Oh, Cave, Cave as Cave Johnson. Johnson. <laughs> when life gives you lemons, lemons you make straight. super lemons or whatever it is. <laughs> They're just like, throw it back in the face. You don't want no stupid <laughs> lemons. <laughs> I think he has a couple different versions of that. Yeah, there's, there's a, lot, a, lot, a oh, lot of lines. Oh, man. I love Portal 2. That was great. So let's do kind of some quick fire with some more, I don't want to say more modern because a lot of the people we've mentioned are of course still working, mm. but newer, um, newer to us. So for me, I got to go with Ashley Birch. Okay. Yeah. So Ashley Birch, most people know from YouTube because she was uh, in Hey Ash, What You Play In, and she was in that with her brother, Anthony Birch, who wrote, Por- or wrote Borderlands 2. Oh. And she played Tiny Tina in Borderlands 2. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But she is she has turned this into a full on career. When I first discovered Ashley Birch, like she hadn't even done Borderlands 2 yet. Mm. And so, you know, I think I think the thing that really got me though was when I heard her uh she's done Cassie Cage in Mortal Kombat X. You know, she has done uh, Chun-Li in Marvel First Capcom Infinite. And she did April O'Neil in uh, Mutants in Manhattan for Mm -hmm. TMNT. And she's also done voices for, like, Steven Universe and Attack on Titan. She had voices in that. Yeah. But the thing that really got me was her as, and I hate this name, but Aloy. Aloy, yeah. From Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah. And, my God, that story... When anybody tells me that they get bored around the center part of that game with the lore, Mm -hmm. I get it. But what really kept me going in that game was her voice. Her performance really cemented that I wanted to know what happened to that character. Yeah. And she did such a good job. And some I've heard some people say that, like, well, she comes off very same tone Mm -hmm. in a lot of scenes. But she seems like a stoic character. Right. So to me, it worked. Yeah. And I really I loved her performance of that. Mm-hmm. I really hope when they do the next Mortal Kombat, they bring Cassie Cage back and let her do that again. Mm-hmm. I have not played Life is Strange. I know she's in the first season, and I know because of the voice actor strike or whatever, she wasn't in the second one. Right. But I think she's doing an amazing job. Yeah, Like, definitely. she is seriously doing some great work right now. One of my other favorites, when we were talking about badasses, I meant to bring up Daniel Day Kim. Mm-hmm. Isn't Daniel Day Kim in Lost? The TV sh- TV yeah. show? He, yeah, he's, he's, um, he's the Korean couple. Yeah. Well, he's yeah, not yeah. a couple. But. No, he's, the, he's two people. He was in that. He is also someone who we were talking about. He's been on like two episodes of Beverly Hills 90210. Hmm. Um, he, he really, the big thing he does right now is he does, he was doing the newer Hawaii Five O. I don't think that show's still going. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, no, which apparently was. crossed over with some other show where he played his character from Hawaii Five O on like some other show. I, huh. I didn't bother reading all that. But the thing I thought you would know him from is he was in Tenchu Wrath of Heaven as Ricky Maru. Really? Was he Ricky Maru? Yeah. Huh. I, I didn't. It's the I only didn't Tenchu that. game he's in, but apparently he was Ricky right. Mario. Right. I d- well, I, I never play as Ricky Mario, so. But for me, he'll always be Johnny Gat from Saint Shro. Saint, right? Yeah. Um, like I have never been just you know Saint Shro for anybody who doesn't know is very tongue in cheek. Mm-hmm. And you want to talk about not only being a badass but being a funny badass. Yeah. Like this dude was amazing. And slight spoiler, but the, we're a game past this now. They make you think he's dead in the third one. Right. And, oh, my God. Like, I, I was legit upset when they killed him. Especially because it felt like there was no um, payoff for it. Right. Really. But then, of course, the fourth game comes out, and you find out why and all that stuff. And it's just, like, it's dumb fun. But, man, he does such a good job with that. Speaking of, like, um, funny badasses, John DiMaggio... Yeah, definitely. Um, because... Because it's like, Bender. It, yeah, Bender from Futurama. He's uh, Walker 
in Final Fantasy X. See, you, I almost brought that up because uh, you mentioned Final Fantasy X, but I was afraid you were going to do the laugh again, so I didn't bring it up. <laughs> yeah, but what I didn't, I, I didn't realize is not only is he Waka, but he also plays Kimari. Uh, who was that? Kimari was the Ronso. What is that? The Ronso with the horn. His horn's broken off. Yuna's protector. Is this English? You've played Final Fantasy X. I Don't know. give me that I, crap. No, no, hold on. I played Final Fantasy X when Final Fantasy X was brand the, new. The blue furry yes, I, dude. I, I, I was just continuing the joke, but okay. it did take me a minute to realize what you were talking <laughs> so, about. Who? But yeah, I didn't realize that. Um, I, I, you know, I just as soon as I real, as soon as I put the two together, that he was uh, Bender, and then you know, Adventure Time. He's um, Jake. No, Finn. Wait. Which is the dog? Jake. Yeah, it's Jake. Okay. Yeah. He's, Jake he's, the dog. Or Finn? Yeah. Okay, yeah, Jake the dog. Yeah, he's Jake. Did you legit just have to sing the song to figure that out? <laughs> <laughs> you dork. It's like it's like when you do A B C that A B C D. Yeah. <laughs> John <Yeah>. DiMaggio <laughs> is Jake <laughs> from Adventure <laughs> Time. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Badass wise, so those characters weren't. Well, well, badass wise, he was Marcus Phoenix right. in Gears of War. Exactly, which again, and, I did not know. But here's the thing: like, again, we don't have time for this, but mm. Gears of War had a ton time, of really. Uh, the guy who played Baird mm-hmm. is a great voice actor. Yeah. The guy who played Dom. Yeah. Uh, some of that stuff in is it Gears of War three? Yeah. Some of those conversations with Dom mm-hmm. are amazing. Yeah. And then something that I think we actually talked about this, and you may not remember. When you were actively doing what the world needed and playing through Vampire the Masquerade, Bloodlines, Mm -hmm. you know, he's Smiling Jack. He's the Anarch guy. Oh, I know. Okay. Yeah, I think I'd met him at the point where I I'm pretty sure you did. Yeah. That rings a bell. It's been a bit, but I've been Yeah. Yeah, no, I can hear that. I can hear that, too. Okay, we went over a lot of people. We, we did. We did. Yeah. And um, I know we kind of crammed a lot of this in, but like I said, this was kind of tip of the iceberg stuff, and we just wanted to kind of share, you know, people we liked, mm-hmm. roles we enjoyed, stuff like that. So, of course, I want to ask you a question before we go. What's that? Who is an actor or actress you would like to have a starring role as a voice actor in an upcoming game that maybe hasn't done it? That hasn't. Yeah. That I, you can't throw questions like that at me at like four That's in fine. the morning. That's fine. I will. I will tell yeah, you yes, my answer. Yes, please, please why do. You think. So my joke answer, which isn't really a joke answer, it's not a joke answer, is I want Jaleel White to come back as Sonic the Hedgehog. Okay. So Jaleel White, of course, voiced Sonic the Hedgehog in three, I believe, at mm-hmm. least two of the Sonic cartoons. And he was way past cool. Oh. And I would love for him to come back and and do that again. But my other joke, and people are going to laugh at me, but seriously. I am not a huge fan of this character. But Chris Hemsworth as Thor. Mm. As far as I know, Chris Hemsworth has not done any video game voice acting. He has a really good voice and great comedic timing, if you've seen Thor Ragnarok. Mm-hmm. To play a video game character. And I'm not saying they should make a Thor game. But no, obviously but, that would be just, a good entry point. Right, yeah. Like I said, I'm not a huge fan of the character. But that would be a good entry point to do a Thor game. I think he would kill it. In which case, then, I don't know. Again, I don't know if he's done anything. Maybe he has. But Robert Downey Jr. I don't, I don't know, don't know what, if they could afford him. I don't know what role, though. Well, um, I mean, you could... You could but argue no, about Hemsworth, but... Uh, yeah, but uh, Junior, Downey Jr. makes a lot more money than he does. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that doesn't surprise me. But, yeah. But, but he, no, yeah, with both of them, you could say. But um, that, that'd be a good one. Like, I don't I don't know what role he would play, but I, I could see him doing something. Sure. Yeah. So, of course, wrapping this up, we mm-hmm. want you guys that are listening, tell us a couple of your favorite voice actors favorite performances for like a character that has to do with the voice acting, maybe reason why you liked it. But if you think of an actor or actress that you would really like to see, have a chance, you know, someone who might be already established, but you want to see them have a chance in video games, you know, established in other mediums, but haven't done something with video games. 
let us know. We're curious. We're mm. interested in that stuff. Yeah. So, we'll as usual, them. you can find us both on Twitter. Yes, uh, you can find us on Twitter. There'll be a link in the description. And uh, just in case, though, my Twitter is geeketiquetteyt. Right. Even though she is now exclusively streaming on Twitch. <laughs> but that YT is still well, there. Well, that YT it could be YouTube, Twitch. YT, YouTube, Twitch. Because I'm still uploading podcasts to YouTube, and I still may, I still will be making content to YouTube. Look, you don't need to try to argue this. No, okay. I'm not arguing. I'm not arguing. Abandoned. But my Twitch is twitch.tv forward slash geek etiquette. <laughs> that forced plug, though. <laughs> Uh, and, of course, I am doing some streaming over on Twitch as well, and you can find my articles and all that stuff, uh, mostly through my website or just following me on Twitter. But this has been a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. As and, always. Yeah, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye!